Welcome to Read and Write for Google Chrome, assisting students who struggle with reading and writing. My name is Siobhan McManus, and I will be guiding you through the features of the Read and Write toolbar. Today's objectives include learning how to install Read and Write if you don't already have it on your computer. I'm going to show you how to acquire the free teacher version. When we're done with that, we're going to learn the features for reading and writing and how to individualize read and write for students. Finally, I'll explain how you can obtain the full version license for students who have an IEP or 504 plan and they need some of the features that are included in the full version of read and write. Here's a quick introduction to Read and Write from TextUp. As soon as we're done viewing the video, you will learn how to install the Read and Write toolbar onto your computer. Millions of young people around the world are getting a daily literacy and language boost with Read and Write. And now we've made it even better. Read and Write helps students learn, research, and express themselves more confidently at all grade levels and across all subjects. The friendly toolbar works with web pages, PDF files, Google Docs, and all your classroom documents and existing lesson plans. And with great features like text-to-speech, word prediction, picture dictionaries, audio maker, and study highlighters, it fits right in with today's varied curriculum and teaching strategies. When you've got a classroom full of individuals with their own abilities, challenges, and attitudes to learning, Read and Write gives every student just the right level of personalized support they need. Fluent readers looking to enrich their vocabulary, English language learners, and students who are performing below average in their literacy scores, allowing them to catch up with the rest of the class. Read and Write offers help to all your students. What's more, it includes welcome extra features, which gives students with additional learning needs like dyslexia a little extra support without making them feel any different from their classmates. Read and Write is easy for schools to deploy and use. One license gives full access for every type of device, PCs, Macs, Chromebooks, and tablets. And it's always up to date, with updates being delivered automatically. So support is a breeze for busy IT staff. Sign in and you're good to go, in class, at home, or on the move. So why not give every one of your students a valuable literacy boost with our best ever read and write. Most students have Read and Write already on their Chromebooks as it was deployed earlier this year. However, it was not installed on teacher computers. Some of you may have already had it installed or you may have gone into the web store and gotten it for yourself. For teachers, you need to follow these instructions. You'll open up the new a new tab at the top of your screen. In the upper hand of the left corner of the screen, you'll click on the icon of the waffle or the Rubik's Cube. Click on the web store icon. Then in the search the store window, you will type read and write. You will click add on, you will click on add to Chrome button to the right of read and write. And that's it. You'll now see the icon on the toolbar. Just in case some of you don't know how to install the extension, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you now. By opening a new tab at the top of my screen, I can go to my upper left hand corner and find the apps, which I also refer to as the waffle or the Rubik cube. I click on it and I go to the web store. Once there, I'm going to type read and write in the dialog box. I click enter and here is read and write 
which is the purple rectangle, and it has a puzzle piece within it. Click on that, on that rectangle, and you will come to the Read and Write for Google Chrome page in the Chrome Web Store. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see I have a button that says Remove from Chrome. That is because I already have Read and Write on my toolbar. You should see a button that says Add to Chrome. Go ahead and click on that. Once you click on it, you will get another dialog box that says, are you sure you want to add this? Go ahead and say yes, because you have to give it permission. Once that's done, you will either see this purple puzzle piece on the top toolbar of your screen or not. If you do not see it, come over to the right where you'll see another puzzle piece, that is the extensions. Click on extensions, scroll down until you see read and write for Google Chrome. When you see that, you want to click the pin button, the pin over here, and it will put it right on your toolbar. If it is already blue, you should see it up here on your toolbar. So you'll see if I unpin it, it disappeared. Now when I pin it and it turns blue, I get my puzzle piece at the top. And that's it. That is how you add Google Chrome to your computer. Although students had access to all of the features in Read and Write for 30 days, they now only have access to the text-to-speech feature. You may be wondering, well, why are we learning about the full version? First of all, it's free for teachers, and you may have students that can benefit from one or more feature provided in the full version. We'll talk about how to obtain this for students at the end of training. So, what are these tools that we're talking about? Let's take a look. There are a variety of features, including reading and writing. I'm going to go through the majority of the tools that are available, and here is a, is a list of what they are. We have a dictionary, a picture dictionary. It offers text-to-speech, something called screen mask, there are highlighters for studying, vocabulary list maker, and you have the ability to have students read aloud and send it to you in a file. In writing, we have word prediction and talk and type that assist students who struggle with writing. In a moment, we are going to go ahead and take a look at all of the different features. Some of the features can be individualized to meet the needs of students. As we go through the program, I'm going to show you some of these items that can be individualized. When we think about reading for our students, oftentimes they are looking things up on the internet. Uh, especially in the time of using distance learning and all of our students having Chromebooks, this has been the way a lot of our students and our teachers are working. So I have the students doing a project on the state of Florida. I would like the students to do some research and to everyone's going to pick what they want to write about about the state of Florida. So the first thing I would do is I would bring up my read and write toolbar. Remember, I have to go to the top toolbar, click on the puzzle piece, and here comes my toolbar. On the left-hand side, there are some crosshairs. I can grab them and I can move this toolbar anywhere on the page that I want it. For my purposes, I like to keep it at the top so that the students always know where to find it. On the far right, I can X out, which means it just closes the toolbar. And to the left of that X, I can click and I have some options. When I click on the options, 
I can start to personalize this for my students. We will get to this in just a minute, but I just wanted you to see where it was. The first thing that I want to show you are the reading features. The most important one and the one that is available to all students is the text to speech. I have a lot of print on this page and I have some students that would really struggle with reading this. I'm going to come in and I'm going to highlight and I'm going to click the play button. Florida, FLRD about this sound listen, 14, Spanish pronunciation. FLOI letter ETA is a state located in the southeastern region of the United States. With a population of over 21 million, Florida is the third most populous and the 22nd most extensive of the 50 United States. The state is bordered to the Okay, I just paused that because I want you to see two things. First of all, this is called dual highlighting. It will highlight one sentence at a time in one color, and in the next color, it will do word by word. So as this was reading, it was going word by word in blue, but it was also highlighting each sentence. This is helpful for students who may struggle with um, keeping track being able to stay in their, what place they're supposed to be. And it also can be helpful for students with fluency. If it's too fast and they are losing their place, it helps them find where they're supposed to be. I can also make some changes to the speech and the rate at which it goes. So I'm going to stop that section. I'm going to come over to my options. I click on options, and when I get to speech, I can slow the speed down. I'm going to slow it down to about 40, and I'm going to change the voice. I'm going to change this to Tom, and I say OK, and now when I go and highlight that again, And let's see how it sounds. Florida, FLRD about this sound listen, 14, Spanish pronunciation. FLOR letter ETA is a state located in the southeastern region of the United States. With a population of over 21 million, Florida is the third most populous and the 22nd most. I'm not crazy about his voice either. So once again, I'm going to take a different piece to highlight just so we don't have to listen to them spell out Florida again. Again, I go to my options. I'm going to slow it down a little bit more. And this time I'm going to go back to Ava and see if she sounds any better. Whoops. The state is bordered to the west by the Gulf of Mexico, to the northwest by Alabama, to the north by Georgia to the east by the Atlantic Ocean, and to the south by the Straits of Florida. So as you can see, just by clicking right in there, I was able to make a few adjustments, and it's much easier for some of our students to attend to it. So that's the text-to-speech. Next to that is something called a screenshot reader. The screenshot reader is used if you have locked text. This does not have locked text, and most of our things don't. But if you come across a PDF file, or if you find yourself unable to get something to work, you can try that text, the screenshot reader. The next icon is for the audio maker. We have some students who do very well when they listen to a story, they listen to information. So when I click on some text, I'm gonna do that paragraph, and I click audio maker, It is going to create an MP3 format sound for me. So I can save this, and I'm going to say this is Florida Audio. And when I save it, it is going to create an audio file for me. If you look on the bottom left-hand corner of my page, when I click on it, Florida, FLRD about this sound listen, 14. 
Spanish pronunciation, FLOI letter at the, is a state located in the southeastern region of the United States. With so if you have students who prefer to listen, or if you have a listening station in your class, this is something that you would be able to do. On the next icon, you will see a little globe. So this is uh, a web search. So I have highlighted Native, Native Americans. And if I do click on the web search, it takes me right out to Google and I can go in and I can look up information regarding Native Americans. This is just a step saver for you. Uh, students don't have to go in and out of the program and it can be very helpful for students. Next to the web search, you will see something called Screen Mask. Screen Mask is very helpful for students who, again, may have trouble with tracking. When I click on it, most of my screen goes dark. But as you see, as I move my cursor down, it brings a reading window with it. Now, this is a lot of space, and I want a student to be able to see only one line at a time. So if I come over to the left-hand side, you'll see I've got a new icon with a little settings icon next to it. I click on those settings, and I can come in here, and I can change the height of my reading window. So I wanna make it one line. And now I say OK. And now I can read one line at a time. For students who really get lost, this is really helpful. Some students might do better if they have a couple of lines showing. And we can certainly do that too. Always have to say OK. And this way, they have a little bit more room and they don't have to move the cursor quite as much or not so fast. So again, that's screen masking. And next to the screen mask, I'm going to skip over the talk and type. We get to the translator. So if you have students in your class and they do not, they are English language learners, you may want to have that available. I can click, I can highlight a word, go to translator, and it gives me translation, translator. The next set of icons are the highlighters. And this is, I think, a very cool feature of Read and Write. What it does is it allows you to come in and it allows you to highlight a lot of different materials in different colors and then collect the highlights. So as an example, we are doing a project on Florida and each of the students is going to choose two or three things that they want to talk about. So I'm gonna take my first highlighter and we're gonna talk about the fact that Florida is the third most populous state. And I'm gonna do that in yellow. And the capital is Tallahassee in yellow. And Miami, well, let's not say anything about that. Uh, urban, okay, so urban areas include Tampa Bay, Orlando, Jacksonville, whoops, and we should certainly say Miami. All right, next we're going to talk about, oh, let's see, let's talk about I want to talk about some animals. Oh, let's talk about climate because goodness knows we are known for our climate. So we can talk about the fact that we oftentimes have hurricanes.
we are known as the sunshine state. We sometimes have, we are sometimes known as the lightning capital of the United States because we do get so much. In fact, let me make sure we get that information in. Let's see. A lot of people didn't know that about us. We have um, tornadoes. We lead the United States in tornadoes. We have hurricanes. And then let's talk about our animals. We have mammals, marine mammals. We have dolphin. Let me just let me highlight it. We have manatees. That's something that our students have certainly, some of our students have seen. We have whales, which I did not know. I've not seen one. And we have North Atlantic. So you see how I'm going through and I'm doing some highlighting. Let's not forget that our mammals include panthers, otters. Um, I think the key deer, the white-tailed deer. See how I'm just coming through and I'm just doing, okay, I'm not going to do all of them. But of course, we cannot forget the fact that we have alligators. Let's go for our reptiles. Alligators. We have the sea turtles. And those are just some of the things that we have. So I've got some things highlighted. And now I want to start writing a paper. So I'm going to come over here on the right hand side of my toolbar to where it says collect highlights. I click on it. And I have my colors all chosen. And I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to get a new document that has all of that information that I just highlighted. If I am writing a story about the state of Florida, this is where I would start. I have outlined what I want to write about. They are highlighted so that they are categorized. And what I really like is the fact that it cites where I got my information. So when my students are handing in a report, I can say, where did you get your information? And there it is. So again, highlighters and collecting highlighters a very cool feature. I can also come in here with the things that are highlighted and I can create a vocabulary list. If I click on this bulleted section, it's going to create another document for me and this document will be my vocabulary list. I'm not so sure how well this will work out because I've got some cities in there. But as you can see, I have my names of my cities, a description of them, I have some mammals, reptiles. But what I really like about this, not only does it give symbol support, it gives this definition a symbol, if it has it in their dictionary, and then the students can come in and put their own notes in here. So if they know something about Miami, like maybe their grandparents live in Miami, they could write some notes in here to make this more meaningful for themselves. So that is a vocabulary list maker, and I just think that is such a cool feature. Once we're done with the different highlights, whether we're collecting highlights or we're making a vocabulary list, we can come in, we can highlight the whole document, 
and we can sweep away the highlights, clear those highlights. The next thing I want to show you is what's called Simplify Page. For some students, this is very overwhelming. So in order to make it easier for some students to read, we're going to click on Simplify Page. What's happened is it has now taken away the distraction. And now it's easier for my students to read. I can change it from black on white to blue on yellow or white on black for students who are visually impaired. I can do yellow on blue. I can change my font. I can make it larger. I can change the font itself. I can also, I'm going to go back to, I want to go back to black on white. I can simplify this. I can also put more space between my lines. I can make it even more simplified by clicking on the minus button. So that's going to take away a little bit. And it's just simplifying it, making it a little bit easier. So that is the simplify page. The last thing I want to show you in the reading features is something called read aloud. This is where students can practice reading aloud and they can send the audio file to their teacher. So again, I'm going to come in and I'm going to select a paragraph and I'm going to click on the read aloud. So what it's done is that it has made it a little easier to read and you will see there's a microphone. There are instructions right here on the right hand side that gives the students directions on how to record and send this to their teacher. I'm going to come down and I am going to pick a paragraph. I'm going to pick the British divided and consolidated the Florida provinces. I'm going to start my recording. The British divided and consolidated the Florida provinces, La Florida, into East Florida and West Florida, a division the Spanish government kept after the brief British period. I'm going to stop there. I can listen to it. The British divided and consolidated the Florida provinces, La Florida, into East Florida and West Florida a division the Spanish government kept after the brief British period. If I'm satisfied with that, I would click on the send a teacher arrow and it would have me find what teacher I wanted to send it to. I would click on that teacher and I would go ahead and send it to them. If the student is not happy with their recording, they can go in and they can record it as many times as they want. So those are the reading features of Read and Write that I wanted to show you today. Now I'm going to show you a few items that will be helpful for students for writing. I'm going to go to my new tab. I'm going to open up a Google Doc. I'm going to open up a new doc. And I'm going to give it a title. What I want to do for summer. Whoops. Okay, it doesn't want to be that long. So what I want to do. 
I'm going to open up my Google, excuse me, my Read and Write for Google Docs, my toolbar. And I'm going to start typing a story. This summer, I would, oh, I don't know how to spell that word. I would, would, I'm not sure how to spell that. If I come up here to the crystal ball, that's the word prediction. If I click on that, I'm going to get some suggestions. Would, no, that's not right. I'm not sure. Wold. Old. Weld. Wild. Wold. Hmm, I know that's not right. How about wood? Wood. Wood. I'm not sure that. Wold. Wold. Wool. Wood. Oh, that's the word. Let me click on that one. B. I would like to go to the mountains. Mow, mow, ow, ow, ow. Mountains. Tin. Oh, I don't think that looks right. Manton. Minton. Montana. Mountain. There it is. To the mountain. First, I have, have to pass, passage, my physics exam, F-I-Z-I-X, oh no, that's not right, let's see, physics, there it is, department, so, as you can see, I can have these words predicted as I write. This was originally developed for students who had physical impairments and were unable to type. What's happened is our students who are uh, struggling writers, who may have difficulty with spelling, they may have difficulty with written expression, it has helped them to know what words come next. So if they have a, an idea of how a word starts, this can be a way to help support their reading and their writing. I'm going to turn that off, and then I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with touch with voice typing in Google Tools or Google Docs. We can do the same thing in Read and Write. I can come to Talk and Type. There's that familiar microphone we all know. And as you can see, it is typing everything that I say, period. I find this to be very efficient for our students who struggle with getting their thoughts and ideas down on paper, period. I also think this is a great way for students to see how they think and to see their mistakes, period. I turn off my microphone and I can come in here, I can highlight it, and I can have it read back to the student. Again. There's a familiar microphone we all know and as you can see it is typing everything that I say. I find this to be very efficient for a students who struggle with getting their thoughts and ideas down on paper. I also think this is... So that's a great tool because you can have them use that speech to text and then have them go in and listen to it to see if it sounds right. They also can see where they may have made mistakes and they can go in and make their own corrections. So those are the features of Read and Write for Google Chrome. And I know that some of you are probably thinking, okay, so what is it that our students can use? Right now, all students have access to the basic features of Read and Write. The basic feature includes the speech, excuse me, the text to speech tools. If you have a student that you think could benefit from the different features that you have seen, and they have a current individual education plan or a 504 plan, they may be able to use the full program. If you do have such a student, please follow these instructions. 
collect data that would support the need for the features. Speak with the ESE contact at your school. They will either connect you with or contact the local assistive technology specialist who is assigned to your school. And then the AT specialist will guide you through the process to trial the full version with your student. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today, and I hope that this was informative for you. If you do have any questions about Read and Write, please feel free to reach out to me. Here is my contact information. I am available a lot, so we can always meet virtually, and I can walk you through anything that you have questions with. Also, please be sure to go to the Materials and Attachments section of eLearning to get the Read and Write for Google Chrome Quick Reference Guide. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you.